Today, Saint, Saint Raymond Nonatus is a very interesting saint. He's, uh, he received the name Nonatus from the Latin, two words, non natus, because his mother had actually died before he was born. And he was born uh, through a, um, the operation of the, the C-section. And so it's Raymond not born. And so, as soon as he was old enough to understand that he had lost his mother in that way, he then went to the throne of Our Lady, and there he asked her to be his mother, and that he told her that he would be her son. And it was, and then together they sort of lived daily, speaking, communicating to to each other. Well. He then Saint Raymond, when he got a little bit older, his he showed some signs of a vocation, and the father, not really wanting him to enter a religious life at that point, put him to work in the fields. They owned a farm together, and Saint Raymond gradually grew to love shepherding, watching over the sheep, because there he found solitude. He could he could spend much time in prayer and contemplation. On one occasion, as he was watching the sheep, he went to this old chapel. There's just a tiny little chapel there with a beautiful image of Our Lady in it, and not much more than that. He would go there to spend his time, sometimes hours, praying to the Blessed Virgin Mary. And one day, however, as he was doing that, and he left his sheep, uh, grazing the field, some of the other workers there be, who were, let's say, a little bit shamed, put to shame because they weren't as diligent in their prayer life as he was, they reported him to his father. His father came down, and sure enough, what do you think happened? Well, there was a, a young man there, beautiful young man, shining, watching over the sheep. And it was an angel of, of God who was watching over St. Raymond's little sheep. And the father was surprised at this. So he went to St. Raymond and asked who this young man was. Well, St. Raymond had, knew nothing about him. But then it hit him. Divine providence was protecting him on this occasion. So he immediately fell on his knees, begging pardon of his father for his neglect and his duty of watching the sheep. Well, then he was old enough now to really start thinking about his vocation. So, to whom did he turn? He turned to our Blessed Mother and asked her what he should do with his life. And she actually appeared to him and told him that she should, that he should enter the newly founded religious order, the one founded by Saint uh, Raymond Penyafort and the, the King James of Aragon and one other saint, that is the the Order of Our Lady of Ransom, that dedicated themselves not only to the three vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience, but a fourth vow, which is to to redeem the Christian slaves from the Mohammedans and to purchase them if they had to, to buy them back, and if they had no more money, to make an exchange that they themselves would offer themselves as, as prisoners to the Mohammedans to allow the, the other Christians in danger of losing their faith to go free. Well, so he entered this order and he was immediately sent off to Algiers. There he, he suffered much, but he, at a certain point, he gave away all of his money in redeeming these Christian slaves back and had nothing more to give. On one occasion, there was this one person, one Christian, who was weakening in his faith through fear of all the tortures that awaited him at the hands of the the Mohammedans. So he gave himself over as a slave. And at first he was treated very harshly by his masters, but then they realized, well, they couldn't do that and they couldn't put him to death because if they did, they'd never get their ransom money. Something like the story of Christ and uh, and all of that. But in any case, so 
he was given more freedom, more liberty than the, the other Christian slaves. And he took advantage of that liberty. And then he went about to the, the different Christians and he encouraged them to, to stand fast in the faith, to be firm and persevere to the end. And he also tried to convert many of the infidels as well. Then, soon enough, the, the higher-ups heard about this. They became quite angry. They wanted to take him and impale him. But again, they realized, well, if we do that, we're not getting our money. So they, then they took him, and he, well, he continued preaching the faith yet more. So eventually they took him all around the streets in the city, scourging him. Then they took him to another place where they took red-hot irons. You can almost imagine how painful this would be. And pierced both lips with it, put holes in them, and then put a padlock. And so that he would no longer preach. Every three days or so, they would open the padlock, give him just enough food to keep him alive. And they put him in prison for some eight months, loaded down with, with chains. And that's how he lived but all the time praying and doing penance uh, for himself and for others. Eventually, the ransom money came. He was freed from prison and then was called back to his religious order. And the Pope at that time heard of all that he had endured for the faith and for the sake of others, so he wanted to make him a cardinal, and he did. But St. Raymond never changed anything in his way of life. He lived as as a religious was expected to live, and no more luxury than he had than the other brothers of that community. But um, then eventually another pope, I believe, wanted him to come to Rome and be one of his advisors. Along the way, he had come down with a, a terrible fever and it had died. Well, on his sickbed, he wanted badly to receive one last Holy Communion, Holy Viaticum, but the priest sort of delayed for whatever reason. So an angel came and gave him his last Viaticum, and that is how he died. Then, after his death, there were three groups of people. There was his religious order, there was the city of uh, Barcelona, and then the city near where he died. They were all fighting over who should get his body where his body should stay. Well, they couldn't come to a conclusion, so what did they do? They put him in his coffin on the back of a mule, and they said, well, we'll leave this to Providence. Wherever the mule ends up, that's where we're going to bury him. That is that is who is going to get him. So, do you know where that mule went? He didn't go to the place where St. Raymond died. He didn't go to Barcelona. He didn't go back to the religious order. He went back to the boyhood chapel with the image of Our Lady, where he spent so many hours praying to her. And that is where they buried the body. And later on, it was turned into a, a beautiful cathedral church by one other clergyman. But that shows you. It's all about the small things in life. Here, God wasn't so interested in giving him to the religious order, or to the place where he died, but where he had done so much, had, had gained so many graces by his prayers to the Blessed Mother. What a beautiful thought. Let us then stay close always to Our Lady. If you stay close to her, you'll always be close to her Divine Son, and you will, all the saints tell us, end up in heaven if you show great devotion to your Holy Mother of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.